Panos Gare. Heard of them? If you haven't, you will. And I was right. Welcome to Kanpai Planet, our Mac bringing you the world of Japan's drinks direct from the heart of Tokyo. And today we're taking a look at Single Malt Kanosuke 2022 Limited Edition. A lot has happened in the last year to put the Kanosuke distillery firmly on Japan's whiskey map. They've won a slew of awards, including their double IPA cask finish distillery exclusive, taking category winner in the World Whiskies Awards 2022 Single Malt, no age statement, Japanese category. Their 2021 second and first editions took gold and silver respectively in the same category. Over here at the Tokyo Whiskey and Spirits competition, the 2021 first edition was one of only four Japanese whiskies out of 50 entered to win superior gold in the Western Spirits division. That's some pretty rarefied company to be keeping. On the corporate side, the distillery was spun off from former parent Komasa Jozo. This was shortly followed by the news that Diageo, through their investment accelerator distill ventures, had purchased a minority stake in the distillery, providing access to expertise, funding and distribution. Concurrent with all that, Kanosuke have been busy releasing a lot of distillery exclusives, single casks and other special editions. This has all been great to see because when I dropped my first video about Kanosuke, they were somewhat overshadowed by some of the other craft distilleries that had started operations at roughly the same time and I felt rather alone shining a light on them. So here we are today with Single Malt Kanosuke 2022 Limited Edition. There's been some confusion about this release. A lot of drinks info outlets have reported this as a 100% sherry cask whiskey, and that's not the case. The main components come from recharred American white oak casks, which have previously housed Komasa Jozo's flagship shochu, Mellowed Kozuru. Alongside that, sherry cask aged whiskies are used in a greater percentage than have been in previous general releases. Also used are whiskies aged in first fill bourbon barrels and some which have been aged in recharred casks and bourbon casks which have been finished using red wine casks from overseas. This compares to the 2021 first edition which used Ekshochu casks as the key malt and the 2021 second edition which used bourbon casks as the key malt. If you do want a 100% sherried Kanosuke, try hunting down this, released by Hong Kong-based importer-exporter AF Trade. The liquid is housed in what has now become the standard Kanosuke 700 milliliter bottle shape, and the photos on the box are of sunset at Fukiyagahama, Japan's longest sand beach, where the distillery is located. This has been an evolution, sand, sea and sunset for last year's first and second editions and this year's limited edition. I'm told it's what's inside that counts. So let's crack on with that. It uses 100% non-peated malt from the UK and was made using all three of their Miyake Industries pot stills, mainly the left wash still and the center spirit still, but also the left and the right still. That distillation occurred between 2017 and 2019, and that distillate has been aged for three to four years in the barrel types I discussed earlier. Shunichi Nakamura, the head distiller and distillery manager, was responsible for the construction of this blend, overseen by master blender and CEO Yoshitsugu Komasa. It was finally released on Friday the 24th of June 2022, after it was delayed from its originally planned launch date of the 15th of June due to an ABV related labeling error. Speaking of that ABV, it's a cask strength 59%. For context, the typical filling strength at Kanosuke is 63%. This bottle purchased at the Japan RRP will set you back 13,750 yen after tax, the same price as the 2021 first and second editions. Now, that's about 100 US dollars at current exchange rates, which don't exactly flatter the yen. Worth it? Let's find out. Let's check out the color. 
That's a beautiful reddish chestnut auburn color. It's non-chill filtered and natural color. And that depth of color after only three or four years, I think is evidence of accelerated maturation down in that Kagoshima climate. On the nose. Ooh. Right, the first thing that really strikes me is that there isn't really one dominant note here. Sure, I'm getting some sherry notes, some raspberry and strawberry and some plum and raisins, and I'm getting some really deep sweetness, uh, some chocolate and some honey. There's a bit of a kick up the nostrils. Now, there is some heat there, understandable given this is a 59% cask strength whiskey, but that kick is coming from some spice notes. For example, sweet spice such as cinnamon, but also cardamom, uh, star anise, and also some citrus, mainly lemon. Kanpai. I've said this before about Kanoska whiskies, and I'm gonna say it again, and I'm gonna be saying it in the future. You would not pin this down as a three to four year old whiskey. And like on the nose, there's a lot going on. I'm getting sherry notes, uh, raisins and chocolate, and I'm getting some lovely fruit actually, uh, apricot and peach. There is a tannic element to it, but it's very well integrated. You've also got some coffee and some leather, and some of that spiciness that I described on the nose is coupled with a bit of bitterness on the tongue. There's also some really nice underlying salinity to the dram, which provides a bit of structure. For those of you who doubt my ability to pick out sea breeze related notes in a dram, then please go back and watch my Kanoska 2021 first edition review to find out that you shouldn't be doubting anything. I've been thinking hard about the construction of this whiskey. And if I had to guess, I would say it's 50% recharred ex mellowed Kozuru casks, about 30% sherry cask, about 15% bourbon barrels, and then about 5% of those wine finish casks. The finish is medium long, that salty character amplifies into the finish, and that sweet spice yin yang ebbs and flows, and it's absolutely delightful. And dare I say it, it's pretty mellow. They call me mellow yellow, quite rightly. So, what's the verdict? This is an absolutely fantastic dram. It's basically the Kanoska house style with some sherry influence. Ramping up the sherry component has added this depth of sweetness, which really complements the distillery's profile. But it's very balanced. The sherry isn't overwhelming, that mellow fruitiness and spice which has become characteristic of Kanoska releases. If you enjoyed the 2021 limited editions, you're going to enjoy this. Ranking the three, I still have a soft spot for that first edition for its uniqueness, followed by this release and then the 2021 second edition. So should you buy it? Well, that RRP of 13,750 yen after tax is pretty punchy for a young whiskey, but I think the quality level of what Kanoske are putting out is very high and the distillery character is very unique. So if you can afford it, go for it. If you're in a bar that has all three limited edition releases so far, then absolutely, you should put them head to head to head. There are 10,000 bottles of this released domestically that compares to 5,000 for the second edition. And overseas fans can get excited because there will be an international release, but details are undisclosed. 10,000 bottles is pretty sizable for one of Japan's craft distilleries. So Kanosuke are really ramping up. It doesn't take much deduction to uh, deduce that Diageo didn't invest in order to keep things the same as they were. So. I'm expecting some pretty punchy expansion announcements to uh, be announced soon. Last year gave us the 2021 first edition and second edition. This year has given us the 2022 limited edition. I believe this tells us we should expect one annual limited edition cask strength release going forward alongside distillery exclusives and private bottling single casks. 
and that Canosca are rationing their stock and saving their juice for a flagship core release, which I believe will be announced later this year. Canosca's craft cavalcade continues. Kanpai.